Hey, thanks for joining me again. Welcome to My Head in the Cloud. Today we're reviewing the Seeky 39-inch 4K LED TV. Alright, so this review is going to be a little bit different. I did have the TV for a few days, but uh, was cut short on how long I was actually going to have it by some travel and some other things. So, needless to say, I didn't end up getting all the time I wanted to for recording purposes. But I uh, am still going to give you my narration of what I thought of it. I've got some pictures here I was able to take the last night I had it and some short video clips. So, without further ado, here we go. I'll start by reading off some specs on this Seeky 39-inch 4K TV. Starting with the panel itself, we come in at a 3840 by 2160 resolution. There's 4K upscaling. You have an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, or a refresh rate of 120 hertz. Now, they like to list that out in front. We'll talk about that more later because you can't actually get up that high with 4K or 2K. You can actually only get to 30 hertz. Uh, this TV does support through component and HDMI, though, anywhere from 480i up to that 4K resolution. Uh, for inputs, we've got two USB. They can handle JPEGs and MP3 audio. We've got a 15-pin VGA component video, 3 HDMI composite video in, 3.5 millimeter uh, audio in, and then for outputs, you've got another 3.5 millimeter headphone out, RCA out, as well as digital coaxial out. I didn't do an unboxing for this one. I bought a used one from Amazon, so it came repackaged. But basically, in the box, you'll be greeted with the remote. Uh, it's a, just your standard remote. Works great. You know, nothing there. Uh, the glass base, which is interesting that they went with such a nice feature for a cheap, quote-unquote, cheap TV. Uh, it's a nice, solid glass base. It's got black on the bottom, so it appears black from the top. You can see from the side that you've kind of got a greenish aqua tint through it. But really nice, sturdy base. Mounts with five screws uh, into the TV and uh, gives the TV a nice, sturdy feel to it. And then you have the monitor itself obviously. Uh, you also get a, I got a braided HDMI cable as you'll see in one of those pictures. Alright, so this video here starts with me turning on the TV. You'll see the light go blue. That's me pushing the power button. You'll see the TV takes a while to boot up. Not a big deal, but it does take uh, quite a bit of time here. You'll see the logo comes up right away. However, it'll stay black here for a while. I don't know if this is exactly because of how my computer is running or the TV itself, but it always did have a long boot up time. Other than that, you'll see as soon as it starts up, I had a 4K background. It, it is a very nice, sharp picture. Very clear, very bright, good color. Um, <clears throat> I tried to move in with a camera here to get some a little bit closer up to it so you can see how sharp it is. But it's a really great picture. Um, I really did like watching videos in 4K. Um, the upscaling was okay. Some things looked better upscaled than others. A uh, little side note here. I'm going to put my thumb next to the icons. You can see that this is everything gets shrunk down really small to that resolution. So you can see right there the start button, some icons tiny. The idea of things being shrunk down can clearly be seen in this next picture as well. You see I've got uh, Spotify, Amazon, Steam, and League of Legends open, but they're all able to fit. Uh, the text is extremely clear, but it is small. The text is very small, so at a distance of too far, it actually gets hard to read certain things. One of the reasons I had just a little bit of trouble with it. In this next shot here, you see Amazon. It actually stretches the picture. This is for the Seeky. I, it didn't do this on other items, but some it would just stretch to try to fill the gap. So I guess that has to do with their website. And then finally, this last one is Spotify. You can see the unimaginable amount of tracks you can see it once again. Really clear, but sometimes hard to read if you're not sitting close enough to it or you're sleepy or anything. So, so to wrap up, what did I like? What didn't I like? Well, the first thing I liked about this TV was the price. It's what originally attracted me to it. $400 for a 4K TV. Couldn't pass it up. Now, the price has gone back up on Amazon at least to about $600, I think, right now, which is still a good price for a 4K TV. The second thing was the 4K. Uh, it was an unbelievably sharp, clear image, as 4K should be. Uh, when looking at video, you could just get details you would have never seen before in 1080p. And finally, the last thing was, from a tech perspective, was definitely the inputs and outputs. This thing had a plethora of them. Three HDMI, two USB, just multiple of everything. Tons of audio ins and outs, just everything you want to be able to really hook this thing up to any configuration you might want. What were some things I didn't like? Well, first would be the uh, quality. At certain times, the plastic around the edges felt cheap. I actually had my model was coming apart up at the top. The plastic was splitting a little bit. Um, the base was a nice glass, which felt good, but the screws that mounted it into the uh, arm of the TV were actually just screwing into the plastic. It wasn't like threaded holes for a bolt. I lost the video for this part for some reason, but uh, one of the other things I didn't like was the port placement. I like the ports, but you can see by this picture right here, this HDMI port was not put in a good spot. The cable had to be pushed out because of the body of the TV, and therefore it was putting pressure on the port. You can kind of see it bending out away from it. The last thing I didn't like, which was the major reason I sent it back, was the 30 hertz refresh rate. People would sometimes say, you can get away with it. Other people would say, you can't. Some people would say, it's great for gaming. Other people would say, it wasn't, so I just had to try it for myself. 
The 30 hertz was really a killer for me. Like I said, at some points it just felt like my mouse was moving slow, or you could almost see it, you know, when you can turn on the tails on your mouse, if you've ever done that, but it almost looked like there were multiple of them following it. And then gaming. I'm a huge gamer, and uh, it I just couldn't get away with it in most games. Like I said, a lot of the time it was almost like your eyes were asleep. You'd you'd stop moving in the game, everything would look really good and clear, and then as soon as you started to move, you would almost rub your eyes, thinking it was a little bit blurry, because it just kind of it's just on that borderline. As you know, 30 hertz means you get about 30 frames per second at max, so it really caps it. A lot of games run at 60 or in that range, so it's about half of what you're probably used to. At current, I would have to say I would not recommend this to anybody. I would say that we have not, we don't have enough content. Uh, the 30 hertz needs to be kicked up to 60 or more. I will actually post a few articles in the description saying why I really don't think it's there. Some other articles pointing out how we're not really ready for 4K, how there's not enough content, as I said, some other things. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope to have a review of this, my new monitor, the AOC 29-inch Ultrawide, up really soon. So uh, check back for that, and uh, thanks for watching.